Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. The title of today's episode is How to Explore Colombia's Touristic Cities. This is for first-time travelers who have never been to the country, and also for people who have explored one or two cities and who are looking to explore more of the country. The locations were selected with good weather, leisure, and entertainment in mind and are suitable for solo travelers or groups of travelers. These selections are tourist-friendly. So let's get started with an overview of the three selected cities, including neighborhoods in each city that you should stay in to start your exploration. The first is Cartagena on the northern coast. The next is Medellin further south. And even more south is the city of Cali. So first up on the list, we have Cartagena. It is a port city on the northern coast of Colombia next to the Caribbean Sea. It is very hot and humid, has beaches, and is the most expensive city in Colombia and fifth largest city by population. The most touristic zone is a colonial walled city that is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here on the screen, I have a view from the old city, looking south to the Boca Grande neighborhood where all the high rises and newer buildings are. This neighborhood is also called Ciudad Amurallada, meaning the walled city in Spanish. Here's another view of Cartagena's main entrance to the old city, this time looking north. The monument we have in front of us in the center of the screen is called Torre del Reloj, meaning the clock tower, and it is the most popular entrance into the old city underneath the city walls. Moving further south and also looking south in this photo, about five minutes away from the old city, we have the Boca Grande neighborhood, many tall buildings and hotels and Airbnbs. They are located right next to the beach. Further south into Boca Grande, we have a neighborhood called El Laguito. It is a neighborhood at the southern tip of Boca Grande. We have many buildings and Airbnbs and also hotels surrounding a lake, and it is a very nice view. One of the most famous attractions in Cartagena is Castillo de San Felipe. This is a old Spanish fort or castle and is well worth visiting, but you definitely need to bring an umbrella and water so that you don't bake to death in the Cartagena sun as you're walking around in the outdoors for an hour or two. Moving on to the city of Medellin, Medellin is an inland city in the northwest section of Colombia without direct access to any major bodies of water and is rather high up at 5,000 feet in elevation. It is located in a very mountainous province, and the city is known as the City of Eternal Spring. It has what is considered by many to be absolutely perfect year-round weather, lower 80s during the day, mid-60s during the evening, and it is a major magnet for digital nomads, expats, and passport pros. It's less expensive than Cartagena overall, but more expensive than Cali. It is very hilly, so be prepared to walk up and down and up and down everywhere you go. Starting off, we have the El Poblado neighborhood, which is the photo I have up on the screen. This is the tourist slash gringo zone and is the most popular entry point, not only to Medellin, but possibly to all of Colombia for most foreigners. Inside this neighborhood, you have the hotel and hostel zone, and you can get by with just English. Because of the convenience and due to the demand, you'll pay the highest prices for rent and accommodations. Inside the El Poblado neighborhood, you will find Parque Lleras. It is a park that is surrounded by bars and restaurants with some rather crazy nightlife. A lot of places are open late and it is quite infamous for a variety of reasons. Moving on to the northwest, we have the Lorales neighborhood. It is right next to the soccer stadium, and there are a lot of nightlife options along a strip known as La Setenta. The city has the best public transportation in all of Colombia, featuring an above-ground train called the Metro. Moving on to the next city on our list, we have Cali. Cali is an inland city in the southwest section of Colombia and has no direct access to any major bodies of water. Its elevation is 3,300 feet above sea level. It is relatively flat, and it's also known as the capital of Salsa. It is slightly warmer than Medellin and does not have nearly as many high-rise buildings. 
It's cheaper than Medellin and significantly cheaper than Cartagena. It's generally not as popular with tourists and expats and is also generally not known as a major tourist destination, unlike Medellin and Cartagena. Starting off, we have the San Antonio neighborhood. This is known as the hostel zone that is most popular for backpackers, tourists, and party goers. The photo on the screen is of the San Antonio neighborhood looking east from a hilltop. The next most popular neighborhood in Cali for tourists and visitors is El Peñón. That is known as the hotel zone and is more for business travelers and has a variety of options for mid and high end dining and far less hostels. Up on the screen, we have a photo of Parque del Peñón, which is a park surrounded by dining options in the middle of El Peñón neighborhood. There are salsa bars located throughout the city, great for dancing and listening to salsa music. The photo on the screen is of La Topa Talondran Salsa Nightclub, which is probably the most popular nightclub for foreigners and travelers, usually with a 50-50 mix of locals and foreigners. So with this overview of the three major touristic cities and two neighborhoods selected from each one, you now know two neighborhoods in each city that you can stay in. Now, how do you fill up your day with things and activities to do? Your best one-stop shop is tripadvisor.com. They have compiled extremely helpful lists of tourist attractions and restaurants sorted by cuisine type, which will keep you very, very busy for days in each city. Here we have a list in TripAdvisor, things to do in Cartagena. There are popular things to do, bus, bus tours, day trips, points of interests, nature and wildlife, half day tours, which you can purchase usually at very, very fair, non-elevated, jacked up gringo prices. But further down the list, you can see the top attractions in Cartagena. These are the top attractions for a reason with thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of reviews. Like for example, the walled city of Cartagena here has 23,000 reviews at an average rating of four and a half. Every single one of these attractions on the top of the list are worth exploring. We have the walled city of Cartagena, Castillo de San Felipe, Caribe Jewelry Museum, Sanctuary of St. Peter, Claver, Barrio Getsemani, that's a neighborhood, and so on and, and so forth. And it's not limited to the top 12 attractions. If you press the see all button, you can see that this list extends to a thousand plus places sorted by favorite travelers. So one list in just one city alone will keep you busy for a very, very, very long time. Should you wish to explore every single place on the list. Moving on, we have restaurants. TripAdvisor has already pre-made lists of restaurants sorted into various categories. Here we have fine dining, local eats, budget-friendly bites, cheap eats, breakfast, delivery available, and so on and so forth. If these pre-made lists are not to your liking or you want to do a little bit of searching by yourself, you can go to the left-hand side and select the criteria that you want with only the dinner option selected to show restaurants that serve dinner i have 714 results in just the city of cartagena exploring all of them will take weeks and weeks and weeks tripadvisor also enables you to book hotels at the top of the bar here if you click on hotel it will load up a site full of options for accommodations, and you can search for what's available for your travel dates. For example, if I travel from January 23rd to the 24th, it gives me a variety of options. And again, I can search by price point, breakfast, property types, etc. So I hope this video has been informative. With this overview of the three major touristic cities of Colombia and the top two touristic neighborhoods in each, and using this one-stop shop tool for hotels, activities, and restaurants, you can create your own itineraries for exploring the cities of Colombia. For those of you who have never traveled to Colombia before because of safety concerns, the entire Colombia safety course is now available on Subscribestar. Check it out in the link in the description below. If any of you folks need some help with planning your life 
or with organizing a trip, email Say and Chan at protonmail.com to inquire about a session with Say and Chan Life Coaching and Consulting. Everyone else, if you would like to support me and my work, please consider doing so on Subscribestar, Cash App, PayPal, YouTube memberships, or Super Thanks, all links in the description below. Everyone else, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. This is Say and Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.